Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to another App Engine Office Hours Hangout. And so, th this is Amy from App Engine Developer Relations. Once again, not on, happily not on screen. <laughs> <laughs> and um, joining me in, in our lovely studio today are three members of the App Engine team. And so, um, these are um, Sam, Brian, and Matt. And they are, are going to talk to us today about a, a really neat thing that they've been working on, which is a new experimental dev app server for, for Python. And so if you, go, if you want to join this Hangout, please do, if anyone is um, watching. You can go to the developers.google.com slash live event page, and you should, should see a join button. And you can also see a join link on our um, Cloud Platform G Plus page. And this is, of course, being recorded as well. OK, so um, let's get started. And I'll let these guys take it away. So Brian, tell us a little bit about what the new DevApp server is and what it's doing. Well, I'll actually start by uh, pointing out how you would uh, you can get to it, uh, because it's my, my goal here to try and convince everyone who listens to this that they should download DevApp Server 2, test us, and uh, provide feedback so we can make it uh, better when we release it. So uh, as always, the URL is DevApp Server 2 in a Google search. And then click on the first link. Um, and here you can get um, instructions on like what the uh, design goals are. Uh, you can uh, download the source. Uh, oh, sorry, download the project. And also, if you want, um, we're developing this using Git, so you can uh, uh, Git clone our repository if you want, and then just uh, keep pulling for updates. Um, okay, so actually, I'll start um, with a demo. So. Uh, Dev App Server 2 is its its um, goal is basically to eventually replace the development server that we use for uh, offline non-production Python development and testing. And uh, here's a simple simple application that I made. Um, actually, I'll just. Uh, I'll start by just running it. So here it is running in um, uh, the original development server. So dev app server will run it on port 9000. And then we'll, um, my app is called, it's on my desktop and it's called perf. OK, so I'll run that. And it's running. And then let me go here. And what this does is it just serves um, tiles. Uh, the imagery is courtesy of NASA, and it's just tiles representing the Earth. Now let me do the same thing in a different window using version 2. Hopefully that shell completion is correct, even though it looked wrong. How are we doing? Oh, we're almost done. Uh, and then in version 2, getting nervous because of the demo. Uh, actually, that is very odd. Let me switch back here. I feel like a Microsoft executive on the stage right now. <laughs> Let me restart. Do you want to play Steve Ballmer? Uh, so it's experimental? Uh, yes. Did I say it was experimental? Uh, OK. Let's try again. OK, I don't know why this is happening. Um, let me, so this this is the app. It had thread safe no set before, 
Let me change that to yes. Oh, do I have maybe just a network connectivity problem? That's possible, I suppose. Uh, let me try once more. And then I'll just tell you how awesome this demo would have been. Okay. <sighs> I don't know why that happened. But so, so one of the goals of the project is um, um, the new front end is uh, multi-threaded. So you can see compared to, this is the um, current development server. I just hit reload. And you can see the performance loading content. And in version 2, which I just switched to, this is the uh, performance loading the um, example app. And you can see version 1, if I switch back, it's still, it's still not even half done before the previous one is finished. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea of what the application looks like, um, these image tiles are being served. Um, half of them are being served through um, static content, and the other half are being served by uh, through an app, um, just a user-defined application. And the application is completely trivial. It's just um, uh, sleep for. 100 milliseconds to simulate um, doing some sort of work, and then just uh, open um, open the image, read it, and then write the response. Oh, interesting. I just noticed now that this is not correct for Windows. <laughs> Let me fix that. Um, I'll actually try and uh, I'll try and uh, make we'll try and add this to our demo applications at some point. Um, you just have to check the copyright on that NASA imagery. Um, so you can see one of the advantages that we have in the uh, uh, new development app application server is performance um, due to this multi-threaded uh, front end. We also have uh, a nicer task queue behavior because multiple tasks can execute concurrently and they don't block user requests where they're, when they're running. Um, the the uh, current development server also has this problem where if you URL fetch your own application, it deadlocks. That's because your application is, um, is running. It's single-threaded, so when you then connect back to yourself, that connect back blocks until the request finishes. But of course, the request will never finish until the URL fetch returns. Um, it also fixes some problems. A, a few browsers, notably Opera, have uh, problems um, uh, displaying content from single-threaded web servers because they um, they do multiple fetches in parallel and they kind of get confused if the fetches uh, don't return. Um, so in addition to this multi-threaded front end, we have a, a few other kind of nice things. Um, we're aiming to have a much more uh, much higher fidelity, like we we want to more accurately uh, reflect the production environment. So we do that by spawning multiple instances to handle requests. Um, uh, we support thread safe. Um, you saw I turned that on and magically it made everything work. I don't know why that is, but uh, so clearly thread safe actually does something on this development server. Um, we support warm-up requests. Um, the sandbox, which is the um, part of the development server that emulates or that uh, makes the security look like the production runtime, it's a lot more robust in the version two runtime. Um, and also, uh, we support multiple library versions. Um, in, uh, like, if you define, uh, sorry, in, in the uh, current development server, um, we only we only let you use one version of web app, even though your library's directive allows you to specify different versions. Uh, we fixed that in uh, Dev App Server 2. By the way, if anyone's online and has questions, feel free to fire away. Um, yeah, I see. Um... Anton has, has joined us, and um, please feel free to type in the chat window or break in if, if you have anything you'd like to um, ask or discuss. 
Um, what else? So um, there's also this new um, project we're doing on, on App Engine called Servers. Um, we're not really ready to disclose very much about that. Um, it, there was a tiny bit that we talked about on uh, IO Talk um, this year. Do you remember what uh, talk it was at the end of, Sam? Uh, not sure which talk it was, but it was one given by Troy. A Troy. Okay. So you, if you look on the Google ISO site, look for Troy and App Engine. Um, by look for, I mean, of course, the search is App Engine, Google I.O., Troy. Um, and you look at about the last 15 minutes of the talk, and you'll hear a bit about servers. Um, so servers are basically, like, conceptually, they're, um, uh, they're in the same space as backends, just a way of running um, additional functionality um, as part of the same logical application. Um, so one of the goals of the DevApp Server 2 project is to support that um, robustly in a, in a way that um, the current development server does not provide um, the equivalent support for uh, backend. So for example, the version 2 development server supports um, background threads, um, um, what else does it support? The, did the version 1 support age, start, and stop requests? Uh, I think it might have start, but not stop. But not stop. I have probably shut down requests in v2. In v2. Um, yeah. But you need um, some kind of multi-processing to, to support servers or backends. So. Yeah, in a logical way. Yeah, yeah that's the old DevOps server just the architecture couldn't have supported any kind of uh, long going, on, ongoing background requests or background processing because it's single threaded. Right. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what we're, our goals are. We're also just trying to do um, kind of as much cleanup um, as we can, just support um, you know some little things that make life uh, better for people. Um, uh, for example, we're, we are um, um, supporting high replication data store exclusively, and we have some parameters to allow you to configure exactly how you want, well, like exactly what consistency mode you want for a high replication data store. Um, uh, it's a small thing, but I, I think it's cool. We kind of package all of the data files related to uh, an application, in, like you know, the data, the data store, blob store in one directory, um, which I think is nice. Can you guys think of anything else that's kind of small but cool? Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I can't remember if you mentioned that um, it's. Um, essentially open source to taking contributions. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so so we did, we take a, took a fairly different approach to open sourcing um, a version 2 of the development server. If anyone else has uh, looked at version, the source for version 1, um, you can see we, um, we push the code maybe w once every month or two. Um, they don't include comments or tests. Um, and there's no easy way for you to uh, produce patches or file issues except through the public, um, uh, like, Google, uh, App Engine issue tracker. So we've um, changed all of those things for uh, Dev App Server 2. Um, we have, we, um, you know, you, the code is, uh, I was going to say well commented, but clearly that's a matter that software engineers just uh, you know fight over. Um, I think it's well commented. Is it self documented? Uh, it's self. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it has all the comments. It has all the we that we can see. Um, uh, we include the unit tests, so if you um, if you want to know, uh, like some people have provided feedback saying that.
from your perspective, it gives you a chance to affect our um, uh, development trajectory. So, uh, like if people say, oh, uh, 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 like people have, have already noted that um, maybe some of the dependencies that we have um, should at least be documented better or they should warn you appropriately if you don't have those in, pl in place and the you know we've already taken action to address that because um, you know right now we have a small pool of users and we're trying our best to to make them happy um, um, so is there an issue tracker on GitHub? Are you using that or yeah, use we the are. App and, oh, okay. no, not on GitHub, on Google Code. Oh, okay. So, yeah. and is it the same issue tracker that you use for the rest of App Engine? No, it's not. Okay, so you have to go to a. Um, how do you find that on Google Code? Is there a link from GitHub? Uh, no, no, where all our code is oh, on, on on Google Project. Okay, yeah. Um, so once you're at the once you've done your Google, uh, search for Dev App Server two, um, you just click the right, okay. issues link. And then you can um, file your bugs. Okay. And um, I think your your laptop has, has left the. Laptop oh, okay. <laughs> due, due to our um, little uh, reboot there, if, if you want to um, show you. Oh, okay. You I was just going to do to. Um, and also, what's the license for the Dev Server Two? Um, it's uh, it's all Apache licensed. Um, join. Oops. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions um, yet on the moderator from any of our our viewing audience. And if if you go to if you have a question and you want to ask, if you go to developers.google.com/live um, and and look for for this event, you should be able and and uh, click on it, you should be able to, to find the moderator queue there. So we, we welcome your questions. And you should also be able to join from, from that event page if you want to talk to us directly. Um, and um, otherwise, I'll, I'll play audience for, for a few minutes and, and ask these guys a few more questions. Ah, sorry, there's, there's someone asking, can, can you hear us OK? Um, we can't hear you at all. No, unfortunately, we can't. We can't see them in the Hangout either. Yeah, we, we had a, a little bit of a, a glitch. Um, and our, our Hangout screen appeared to sort of reboot itself. And the person who's asking that question may not, um, may want to try to rejoin. And then we see a, a question from Anand. <laughs> Are there any new and interesting features we expect to see in Dev App Server 2? Um, yes. Well, I mean, as I said, I mean, the we will will we're basically trying to track um, features that are coming up in in um, App Engine itself. So uh, servers would be would be a big one. Um, but obviously, you know, the point of a development server is to emulate what happens in production. So obviously, we're not going to add any features that aren't going to be available when you actually deploy your application. Um, so fidelity, I guess, would be a better feature. And as I said, we're supporting background threads, warm-up requests, better sandboxing, better library version support. Um, so that some of the some of the really tiny things have come up just just from the process of porting over the code to Dev Server two, just discovering little things that were wrong. Like for example, HTTP headers are being sent exactly the same. So we cleaned up all that. Um, yeah. So so just lots of small things that will make it closer to production. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, one of the things that's Still a problem, I think, with Dev Server two, but that we may be working towards improving is um, that that a lot of the libraries you need to you need to bring your own version of the library. So, can we talk about any? Oh, this this is not um, in the current version of Dev Server two. You still need to bring your own version of of libraries, like I, I guess LXML and some yeah. of the other ones. Um, but it, I think at least the architecture will 
perhaps allow this to, to be fixed. Yeah, I mean, adding the dependencies as part of the packaging is yeah. definitely something we'd like to do in the future. Um, so did the, the person ask who, did the person who asked whether they, I, I hope that Anand, that answers your question. So the other person who we couldn't hear, could we, could, could you type in your question or your feedback or whatever you wanted to say? And I see Bryce has, has just joined us. Hi, Bryce. If, if you want to type any questions into the chat or um, um, turn on your audio, you're, you're welcome to. Well, but we don't know if we can actually hear people if they turn yeah. on their audio. <laughs> yeah. So far, we're just seeing black or, or profile pictures. So. Yeah. We're all software engineers, but at home, we all have uh, you know eight blinking on our VCRs. <laughs> So um, Bryce, Bryce is, is typing something. That's great. Uh, yes. <laughs> he, he says he's in a busy room, so he does not to have his, his AV on. Mm -hmm. Very good point. So, so I, I have a, a question um, to, to ask. So I noticed that the um, in the um, command line options for DevOps Server 2, that, um, High replication flag is gone, and there's a consistency flag. Yeah, you guys, want to say a little more about that? Looks like an improvement to the model. Um, sure. So, so that's right. You can't. Um, there's no support for emulating the old master-slave data store anymore, um, since it's been deprecated for how long? Um, and instead, what the flag does is control exactly how the consistency works in high replication. So. The default is uh, time-based, so um, I mean, let me just take a half a step back and explain how how uh, high replication works, like at the most trivial level. So, if you do a um, a put in the data store, and then you do a query which should find that put, and it's not an ancestor query, then um, it's possible that you won't see the data you just put because the data hasn't replicated um, to the instance that um, the, the query is running on. So our default, uh, um, this flag that you were mentioning, by default it kind of emulates that behavior where um, the probability of a result, uh, a query result appearing in uh, or sorry, a put appearing in a query result is proportional to the, the time that's passed since you added it to the data store. And that's good because it didn't used to be the, the default. It used, used to be the, essentially the... Master slave was the default, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and this actually is, this is the, um, this is the most uh, consistent with how, how uh, production app engine works. The longer you wait, the more likely that uh, entity that you put will appear in, in um, uh, query results. Um, so we also have another mode which is uh, uh, purely probability based, like not time based, just probability. And this is actually pretty good for testing um, correctness. So if you, the problem with the time-based model, if you do something like uh, you do a put and then you do a request two seconds later, you'll almost always see that the put you do appears in the, the result because, it, you know, uh, two seconds is, uh, means it's highly likely to appear in the, quest res in the results. Um, the random one just assigns a probability, so whether uh, every query Increases the probability that you'll see a particular entity in it. So that means that even if you're like you can um, kind of hit refresh in your browser or how, whatever triggers a query, and uh, even if there's there was a time delay there, you might not see the result. So that's kind of good for kind of stress testing your well, testing your correctness. And there's a final mode which is. Um, just make things, uh, force things to be consistent. So as soon as you do a put, the you're guaranteed to see the result. Um, and the the uh, 
only good reason to use that is if you have a test and you just want it. If you're using a test and you're doing the using the development server as part of that, and you just need determinism. Um, so we use that ourselves for some of our tests because we just um, the test would be flaky if it had non-deterministic aspects. And also, perhaps just for debugging, if you want to rule out that it's. Um, Oh yeah, if you if you had a sequencing problem yeah. and you wanted yeah, then forcing a particular ordering would be yeah. useful. Yeah, that's true. Just check if we have any more moderator questions. No moderator questions. Oh, there is one. All right. Well, th this um, this is, is not quite on the topic of the dev app server, but it, it's one that everyone would uh, be interested in discussing, I think. <laughs> so we'll, we'll diverge briefly. Um, do you think it's worth learning Go? Currently using Python as my primary language. So um, I, I would say emphatically, yes, Go is, is an excellent language, and it's, it's clean and beautiful, and you will have a lot of fun learning it. Um, would you guys like to contribute to that? Well, as always, yeah. spinning things mm -hmm. back towards something at least vaguely DevOps or two related. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so currently, backends allow you to write a single logical application using, uh, well, actually, versions in general. Just um, the, there's a trick where you can deploy an application. Um, with one version, and then change the runtime and the version, and deploy it again. So now serving under different domains like version number dot your app dot appspot dot com, you can have code running in different languages. So if you have um, Python code that might have a performance hotspot, then and you want to uh, Coded in um, Go, which is significantly faster, um, then you can use this approach. Uh, once servers are released, then there'll be a, a much more convenient way of structuring your applications, like this. Um, I mean, I'm a Python guy, but I, you know, never hurts to learn another language. <laughs> uh, and I think Go complements Python quite nicely. So, does the the Dynamics Server two have do you plan to support code? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you'll be able to run. Uh, so right now, the same, uh, basically the same development server is used to run Python apps and Go apps. And in Dev App Server 2, it will be possible to write an application that has both Go and Python components as part of the same logical application. And I suppose it would be remiss of me not to ask, what about Java? <laughs> um, so Java is... <laughs> to, to put some context on it, if you look in the current SDK, you'll, you'll find that the Go, the Go runtime, uh, the Go um, development server is largely based on the Python one, so, yeah. uh, whereas the Java one is completely separate and written in Java. So yeah, that, I'm asking the hard question. <laughs> it's yeah, so, much harder to integrate Yeah, Java. your colleagues are always the, uh, the worst <laughs> critics. Um, so it would be nice to support that. The, um, like the the difference, the big difference kind of is in uh, culture, I think, between uh, Python and Java. And and uh, in Python and Go, we don't really have a good um, IDE story, debugging story, and um, that's because you know Python doesn't really have a good good uh, debugging story because. I, for whatever reason, uh, Python developers tend not to use things like debuggers and the IDE spaces. We don't have bugs, <laughs> right? And the IDE spaces like heavily fragmented. Like you know, Sam uses Vim. Uh, well, I'm. We all use Vim. Come on. <laughs> well, I use Vim too. Well, but I just I've been playing with Sublime. Pretend not to use Vim. I pretend. I, I, anyway. I use Sublime. I use, okay, and I was using Komodo before, but there's. Um, so people have um, different expectations for tool support versus Java people where they expect, you know, there's, well, I was going to say there's Eclipse and IntelliJ, and really for open source stuff, I think there's really just Eclipse, and Java developers expect a very polished 
um, experience as far as like being able to um, invoke their code directly from the IDE to you know be able to set breakpoints and debug, and just doing that integration work. Um, I mean, we definitely should do it, but uh, I um, there's a lot of open questions on how we would make that work, especially if you had a mixed like if you have a mixed Python Java app. And you hit run and eclipse. You know what does that mean? How how do, how should that work? So to answer the question, yeah, it's good if you if you were to use Go and mix that with Python, you'll have a much better experience on the DevOps server too. In, in the future, it'll be in, easier in future, to mix yeah, them. Yes. Yeah. And Anand says Vim FTW. <laughs> <laughs> So let me ask, ask you guys a, another question. Um, say a little more about the, the multiple instance support, which, which seems re really cool. Um, maybe um, something that as people tune in and out of this broadcast, they might not have heard so much about. So. Sam, you haven't answered a question yet. Go for it. <laughs> OK. So in DevOps Server 1, we have a single instance, unless you use backends, which will do one instance per backend. But in DevOps Server 2, we support a much more production-like uh, instance. Uh, yeah, instances where we will start up new instances in response to traffic, kind of like production does, but yeah, not really the same algorithm as production, though it looks clever anyway. So, so does that mean? So, say I did. Um, uh, like I had a, a handler that was just sleep five seconds, um, and then print hello world. And so you're saying in Dev App Server one, if I did that in five separate tabs in my browser, I triggered them one after another. It would take 25 seconds to see the result in the yes, as exactly. it's true. Okay. Um, and in Dev App Server two, it would make what would well, happen? It depends if you have thread safe on. OK, so let's say I have thread safe off. Seems well, then... like it doesn't work at all if you have thread safe off. <laughs> <laughs> well, on other computers, it works fine. <laughs> so if you have thread safe off, then after a short time, based on uh, some min wait time or something, it will spin up new instances, which will then serve the requests. Cool. So yeah, we can over see five it. seconds. There's a console in DevOps Server two which shows. Uh, sadly, there's not. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of code motion. We we add stuff. We remove stuff. <laughs> there was last time I checked. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, we need to add some sort of UI to um, like production to visualize what instances are getting created, and um, we add that UI. We make some changes to how instances are handled. The UI ends up breaking. We remove it. Um, we re-add uh, we re -add it working, and then this cycle repeats. So, but the good news is, if you put debugging prints on, then you'll see starting instance one, stopping instance one, starting instance two. Oh, and, and I think start you, them up. I think you also get um, there's some debugging statements that sh will show when it's handling a request how many how many like if you have thread safe on how many requests the instances is, yeah. are already handling. Um, yeah. So you can see how much concurrency you're getting. So Amy's. Checking the something. I'm checking the, the moderator queue again. Um, so so we have no more questions. And I, if if anyone's um, watching and has questions, I really would would suggest you jump on the queue because this is a sort of a you know relatively rare opportunity to, to talk to the the um, people who are working on you know something you you use every day and, and ask them about it. So, so we have a question from Bryce coming in, I think. The pressure's on as soon as you start typing. Yeah. 
No, we're, we're waiting in suspense. <laughs> Can you juggle, Matt? Three bowls? Oh. We don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, yeah. the only Googlers in, on the App Engine team that really? can't juggle and entertain people. I thought that Peter was getting everyone to learn how to juggle. Yeah. Not to me. Huh. I tried. Well, when you show up for work, there's juggling balls on the desk. It's there. Learn how to juggle. Well, um, yeah, we may have run out of um, audience questions. And then, do you have any more questions you would like to ask the group? Oh, I think Bryce is still Sorry. typing, actually. So while the typing's happening, I'll I'll just add like we um, we're we're trying to be responsive to people's feedback, as I say, like this is a great opportunity. Like at this point, we're still early stage for you to have um, significant, um, or like be able to affect the direction of the project, um, or at least make sure that it doesn't have uh, uh, bugs or features, missing features that will affect you. So um, I would strongly encourage you if you use the um, development server um, as part of your development process, then um, you know, play with the experimental server, file bugs, ask questions. Even if you don't want to look at it now, if you have important, if there's big limitations in um, uh, the uh, current development server, then you know, let us know to make sure that we don't have the same kind of problems in um, version two, yes. and now, and um, sort of a, a apropos um, of that, Bryce asks: Is um, Dev App Server two a total rewrite? I'm wondering if perhaps some of the Dev App Server one bugs were carried over, and he mentions particularly issues, um, two issues that I'll I'll look up. Let's see, issue um, 8383 is the one where it changes to that high files are not detected. And issue 7717 is the one in Windows, where SQLite fails to write files due to it using the Windows folder for the template. Um, so the first, um, so that that kind of bug we are we we don't carry over. Um, that that bug will like that uh, file detection bug. Um, that, that should only be in um, that release that was in, like the next release of the dev app server will we'll fix that. Um, but no, we don't, we don't have that bug. Um, a completely new strategy for file changes. Right. Um, that's much, um, it's, it's uh, lighter weight in the sense that it takes less resources on your computer to detect file changes. So to, to go to the first part of the question, though, um, I think that a lot of the DevOps server one code was carried over, particularly the stubs. So, so all of the API stubs, the, the data store, um, memcache, URL fetch, and so on. Um, that that has been tweaked a little bit. We, we made it thread safe, for example. Um, but it's mostly carried over. Yeah. Um, the, the new part is the shell around it that, that manages the instances and manages um, running Python code, importing modules. So um, what percentage would you say is? Is new. Well, except for the APIs, oh, it's just uh, ni probably 90% of it is new. We also do like the app.yaml parsing is is the same, but most of it's new. Um, and the second part, the second question, um, I actually don't know about the, I, I mean, I know what bug you're talking about, about creating um, uh, SQLite in um, the temp directory. Um, and to be honest, I haven't tested that, but uh, I will now. Yeah, and Bryce comments, with stumps carried over, there's a good chance that bug still exists. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll check on it. So on yeah. Windows, the SQLite one. Oh, but isn't it, it only occurs if you don't run as admin, and I think I do on my machine. Run as admin? Oh, is that? <laughs> I'm not really a Windows. admin anymore. <laughs> oh, really? I thought. Yeah, they cleaned up. Uh, I'm not really much of a Windows guy. When I think of, I assume my Windows 7 box is basically the same as my Windows 2000 box. Um, 
So okay, so yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen that that bug. So uh, yeah, we'll, hope we'll make a note. Yeah. But we'll make yeah. a note to look into it. I think yeah. the current Windows strategy is don't run as admin unless a program breaks, and then run as admin. Right. So yeah. Okay. And we, um, we have another question from the moderator. Would it be possible to see server side JavaScript for App Engine development, something like Node.js? <laughs> So um, yeah, so for, for, for this one, um, I hope everyone can hear me. I'm a little further away from the mic. Um, we, sort of our stock answer is, well, we, we don't really comment on things that, that aren't um, specifically on the roadmap. But uh, we're definitely aware that people are interested in something like that. And if there, um, there's probably an external issue um, re requesting that. So please go and star it. Um, I'm almost certain there is, and if there's not, you, you can create one. But um, there is one from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the the more stars, the better on on these kinds of requests um, externally. Um, th that's very helpful to us. So. Um, I think Bryce said something else. Uh, yes. So. Um, yeah, Bryce says admin can write to Windows, but regular users cannot. This bug did not exist if you use an earlier version of Python than 2.7. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, thanks for all the information on that, Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. Yeah. Um, that uh, yeah I mean, it would be actually be really helpful if you, so we, um, we only support the SQLite stuff, not the um, pickle-based stuff. So it would actually be, um, like, if you're willing to, Give us a hand, Bryce. If you downloaded the Dev App Server two and just run, uh, run whatever application is giving you problems with uh, V one, and uh, I mean, we'll we'll look into it independently. But I mean, the best way to ensure that we fix it for you is, you know, if you if you tell us it's broken, then for you, then we'll work to make sure it's fixed for you. Um. I don't think we actually said that this only supports the, the Python 2.7 runtime. Right? Uh, right. So we're not actually supporting Python 2.5. For, for the, the experimental dev server. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, so, so you found this link. So optimizing yeah. your Google App Engine app um, is the talk that mentions servers at the end. So. Uh, the, the, Google, Google I.O. talk. Google I.O. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So if you look at Google I.O. 2012, um, optimizing your Google App Engine app, and then look at about the last 15 minutes, it'll talk a bit about servers. And the content before that's good, too. Do not skip. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think um, we, we don't have any more questions. And so I, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up at that. Uh, so. For everyone who's watching, thanks very much for tuning in. And uh, we'll thank you even more if you give us feedback on DevApp Server 2. Yes. Yes, we look forward to having you play around with it. And you mentioned that there was a, a discussion group for it. There is a discussion yeah. group. And it's yeah. if you go to the Google project page, it's all linked from there. Yes. Well, thanks very much for watching, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Bye.